Civil Media. Точка Мака. Слободно. Независно. Отворено. Good day to you, Minister. Thank you for receiving us here. Um, my first question is about the green politics. Do you find our country a good space for green politics? Can we, as a country, see development and implementation of green politics in the uh, in the in the country in uh, various uh, levels and and areas uh, that are actually suitable to to the current developments in the environment in the in the green politics in the green policies and practices do you think that the country has capacities to actually understand and implement green policies and practices First of all, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak to you and especially talk about a topic which is very important, I think, and which is being used very often in the media or by people actually involved in uh, politics. When we speak about green politics or the green agenda, we need to be, first of all, aware of where it comes from. So the green agenda is a international agreement between certain larger industrialized companies, uh, states. First of all, it's the EU Western Balkan green agenda. So they're actually also asking us to align ourselves to the future more sustainable world. When we actually talk about the green agenda, we also need to inform our citizens what it means. So what does the green agenda mean? Or are we going to greenwash everything, as the saying goes? The idea of actually the Green Agenda is very simple and straightforward, to have a very more sustainable future. Now, we're going to speak about the infrastructure, and there's the other level of the climate change that we need to look at. When we speak about the infrastructure, what we would need to inform our citizens is that the Green Agenda means we are trying to build a sustainable infrastructure for them, meaning that they all have clean drinking water, that all their wastewaters get uh, appropriately treated, and we do not uh, pollute our rivers, for which we also actually use for agriculture, that we actually collect the waste appropriately, that we don't discard it everywhere on the, on the fields, that we have the appropriate land filling system, that we have the appropriate uh, selection system, that we have the cleaner environment for tomorrow. That waste does not mean waste, but actually it's a raw material in a lot of cases. So this is something that we need to actually be more proactive about with our, with our citizens and with our, in our country. Do we have the potential? Absolutely. Look around. We have some of the most beautiful mountains in the region, or in Europe even. Actually, the Balkans, the Balkan Green Belt, as it's called, has one of the richest biodiversity in Europe. This is why one of the policies of this government and mine has been to protect our nature and to use it in a sustainable way, to create an economy out of it. That's the green agenda, create an economy out of using our natural resources in a sustainable way. People would love to come and see our mountains. That's why we have a new national park in Shar. This is why we're working on the Malashev and the Osogov mountain ranges. So the potential is unendlessly. But what we need to do is distinguish the two Green agenda, when we speak to the international community, when we go to the conferences and speak about that, and green agenda, when we speak to our citizens to tell them that the green agenda does not mean more costs. If anything, it means a better future for us, our children and our grandchildren. Is there an it. understanding in the, in the country, among, among citizens, in the society, in the media? Th do they understand the, the green agenda? I think our, our citizens understand it. We just need to be able to express this better. And we need to actually do more. All of us need to do more. When I say more, I'm talking about the institutions. That means the plans that we have in place. Now, I'm going to choose one of them, and I'm going to speak about, uh, for example, the energy efficiency, which is actually part of the green agenda. Right. Now, climate change is happening, unfortunately. I think people are beginning to seeing the fact that we have a lot of floods, unfortunately. We have a lot of uh, flash floods, as I said, and it's happening because of the drastic uh, weather ch changes. When that, in the past, we haven't had as many. But this is actually due to climate change. When I say energy efficiency, citizens understand that. That means that we invest in our home to make it more energy efficient, so I spend less on energy. So the citizens understand that. The politics, the politicians also do. That leads me to the second question, actually. To reinvest in homes, in people's homes, is an expensive toy. Actually, uh, the, the, the whole agenda uh, seems to be kind of an expensive toy for, for both institutions and even more for the uh, taxpayers of the country, of any country, not only our country. It isn't, though. When we actually look at the cost it's going to have tomorrow if we don't invest today. You see, this is not a, this is not a, uh, a cost today. But it's if an investment you don't have the, the money future. now... This is why the state 
is actually subsidizing a lot and actually supporting this. We have different programs, maybe on the heating system where we subsidize up to 20% as a state, or whether somebody wants to take out a loan, there's programs from the Global Environment Foundation together with the banks where they also subsidize 15 to 20%. So the support is there. And I understand it's, it's costly, as you said. However, though, this is an investment for the future. Because if you can have a more energy efficient heating system at home, the investment, I'll still call it investment because it is an investment, will be returned within four to five years. So it's even mid term, not even long term? No, no, it's not even long term. Absolutely not. I mean, we, if our houses, if we're heating our homes over winter and it's not isolated properly, we're going to spend a lot more. If we invest on the heat pumps, for example, which are very, very energy efficient, studies or actually people tell me that it actually cu cuts the cost by half, if not more. In this, in this respect, uh, uh, considering the, the global situation, not only the environmental, but also the political, uh, military, security and so on, uh, do you uh, see uh, or can you name a couple of... Uh, highest priorities and maybe the biggest challenges that you're facing as a minister and uh, as the society in as a whole in respect to the environmental but versus all the other challenges of the world of the modern world there's two aspects of that where we actually going to distinguish between the challenges first of all i think unfortunately we had the pandemic to start with that the pandemic gave us a warning it actually was the best stress test, which you usually do in banks and the financial system. You do a stress test, but the pandemic actually had a stress test across the board on the private sector, the institution, administration, etc. And in challenging times, you're supposed to learn something out of things. Then came the unfortunate uh, war in Ukraine and the energy crisis, which gave us a second warning. The fact that our supply chains are way too, our supply chains are way too long. We're too dependent on certain individual sources. So now we're facing an energy crisis because of a conflict, of a war that is happening in Ukraine, and with whole of Europe is facing it, and especially the Balkans, who usually has lower energy prices compared to the Europeans, of course, the U European Union. So the biggest challenge is the fact that we are very dependent on the natural gas that flows from Russia. So the key prior project for us is to diversify our source of natural gas. That's why we've been investing heavily in the network. That's why we are currently investing in the Alexandropoulos uh, LNG port. That's why we're investing in the interconnector with Greece. So that we Do you think that will be sufficient for, for this uh, summer, uh, for this winter? Uh, unfortunately, the interconnector is not going to be built, being built this winter. However, though, we're working together with our neighbors, Bulgaria, so that we also get the natural gas from another source that they're getting themselves. So these are the key challenges when we speak about the international. Locally, though, when we speak about the local challenges of environment, protection of environment, the key challenges are, unfortunately, that over the last 30 years, our state, unfortunately, did not invest a lot on the infrastructure and environment. Let's pick one. Let's pick waste management. For 30 years, it's been decentralized on a local soft government. They are the ones that are obliged to deal with waste management. For 30 years, they have not been able to build the infrastructure, the appropriate infrastructure. That's why, at least my policy was when I came, was to have new laws, new obligations, new responsibilities, but also from the producers, and at the same time trying to find the funding and the financing structure to invest in the infrastructure. Because it is very obvious that the municipalities do not have the financial capability to invest in landfills, transfer stations, and buy new vehicles. So we put it in the government, I, we pass it in the government that we take out a loan, we will actually also get some grant component out of it, and we will build the infrastructure in the country. These are the investments that are needed. The wastewater treatment plants. So you put the responsibility first on the government's shoulder, not uh, on the citizens' uh, part, no, I don't which is remar I, remarkable you indeed cannot put it on by the a politician. On the way. But you cannot put it on the citizens because we're here to govern. We're here to change, make the changes. So we're supposed to take the first steps. It's not the citizens. Is the environmental uh, awareness, the level of environmental uh, awareness, a challenge for you? I don't think that we don't have the awareness. I think the majority of our citizens are actually aware of it. Okay. Of course, there's going to be some that are not. But the question is, again, when I said earlier, have we, as a state, and I'm not saying the government, but as a state, but because a state gets governed by different governments over time, right. have we invested in infrastructure to give the opportunity to the citizens to dispose of their waste, waste appropriately? Have we given the opportunity to our citizens to select their waste in the past? Not, not, uh, not sufficiently. 
This is why we are actually working so with the new laws. We're going to buy the infrastructure. We're going to buy the containers, separation waste. We're going to work together with the private sector because they're the ones that are producing the packaging that ends up being waste. So every time you buy something, in reality, at the same time, you're buying waste because the packaging at the end ends in the bin. But we want to be able to give our citizens the opportunity to go to the containers, separate plastic, can, uh, paper, and the rest of the waste, for example. How far is that operation? Because um, I, I, I don't think we can see a lot of uh, selection. Uh, unfortunately, selection. things have not happened as I foresaw them when I first arrived, or as the government had been planning. We've been, as I said, we've gone through the pandemic, we've gone through crisis, uh, an energy crisis, and now there's also the food issue. So, but this year we're starting. So the law is in Parliament. We're expecting the law to be passed very soon. I don't think there's any single member of parliament who wants to block such an important uh, project when we're speaking about having a cleaner uh, environment and finally solving the issue on waste management. Yeah. Second of all, we also have now funds from the uh, plastic bags that we introduced the fee on it because the idea is the polluter pays principle because plastic bags, at the end of the day, they pollute our soil and they're there for hundreds of years and then it pollutes the underground water that we drink out of, drink from. So. From that, we got about 750,000 euros plus minus, which, with which we will return back to the citizens because we will be buying these containers for our citizens. And then it's going to be our turn as citizens to start selecting our waste. If I were you, I wouldn't be too optimistic uh, when you speak about our parliament so, <laughs> and our uh, politicians. You might uh, arrive to some obstacles and blockades, but... Uh, uh, let's be hopeful, uh, of course. I think it'd be a shame if anybody blocks projects which are of uh, interest to the citizens, really. It's quite simple. I don't see why this would be blocked. There has never been anything against it. These projects have been worked with international community, with international banks. I don't think any member of parliament should be against such a project. I support your optimism, but I would be cautious anyway. I'm, um, I'm, I'm an optimist, <laughs> but I can't help it. However, um, you already mentioned, you actually answered uh, my questions through uh, mentioning uh, projects. Uh, is there any other project that you're running at the moment? There's actually quite a few, and uh, of course, as I said, unfortunately, quite a few of them have been had delays due to the situation of the pandemic, because we need to do environmental impact assessment studies for every project that we start, if they're large infrastructure, and we want to respect the laws that we have and the international uh, communities, standards. regulations and standards. The largest one I was going to speak about is the wastewater treatment plant in Skopje. Right. So, very soon, we will start, hopefully, I mean, the evaluation is ongoing, the car company will be chosen for who's the best offer. Hopefully, by the end of the year, the works might be able to start on the wastewater treatment plant in Skopje. We are currently with funds from the European Union through the EPA projects. We're working on wastewater treatment plants for Bitola and Tetovo. Hopefully, we'll be starting the tendering procedures on those as well. Uh, furthermore, we are also working on the northeast and east region, also through EPA funds for the waste management of those two regions. Then there's a lot of smaller projects that we're working on. We're taking out a loan as well for uh, drinking water and uh, wastewater network. And, um, and other projects are mainly on environmental protection and creating a sustainable uh, industry out of that. That's a lot on your plate, uh, but also I believe that's also very uh, uh, expensive to, to uh, run all these projects, to implement all these projects. Uh, are you optimist that uh, in the in the situation of uh, world crisis, uh, also including economic, uh, a part of the security one, uh, that you will you will actually uh, get all those funds uh, needed for this? For the projects I just mentioned, we've secured the funding already. The funding has been secured. This has already been in the works for the last two years, three years. So this is not something we're starting now. We've been working on this for the last three years. Now we're hoping. We're hoping to start executing these projects. And if we're speaking about economic crisis, this is the best way to support our economy. Investing, as we like to say, green investments, because all these investments I'm speaking about are going to protect the environment. At the same time, these investments are going to be creating new jobs, because they all, these are larger infrastructure projects. And furthermore, they'll be creating jobs and uh, using material that is locally produced as well. So there's going to be a ripple effect in our economy. So the sooner we start with this, the better it is for our country, because we'll be able to support the economy. Well, I hope that 
this uh, part of the the interview will be uh, seen by by um, uh, politicians that uh, might have some obstacles, uh, some objections. Uh, however, um, uh, all what you're uh, speaking about is a part of a systematic and systemic uh, effort, which is. Uh, uh, also requiring a part of money and, uh, and intellectual and other capacities, also time. Um, do you think that uh, frequent electoral uh, the processes uh, uh, go at your hand or it is, uh, uh, I mean, of course this is a rhetorical question, but however, what do you think about early elections or uh, even uh, regular elections, uh, how elections are affecting uh, these kind of projects? Unfortunately, elections create a disturbance. They create a disturbance in the system, they create a disturbance in the processes. Uh, to answer your question whether we need early elections, my, my answer is of course no, I don't believe that. I don't think we need it. Uh, what we need to do is the fact that we need to carry on working. I don't think we need elections in our country every year. We need to stop having elections every year. Maybe local, then comes the parliamentary, then we have the presidential and everything else. So what is key is that we continue working and do not hinder these processes because these are very large, important projects. And we need to support, when I say these projects, I mean all of us as a country, because these are long-term projects, this is a long-term strategy, and a lot of the projects we're working on, when we speak, when we speak about, about environment, they're not political. These are long-term projects. When we speak about the energy, which we haven't opened on the topic yet, on the energy strategy, this is long-term. That's why it's not going to be today that we're going to start building Chebrin, which is also, by the way, in the final phases of the evaluation, hopefully, by as of July and et cetera, we're going to expect the offers, the second phase on the offers for Chebrin. It's not a mandate thing. This will take seven to 10 years to be built, should we be successful with the tendering, so I can assure you, I'm, I won't be the minister who's going to be cutting the ribbons then, but I can assure you that it's going to be part of the energy strategy of the, of the country for the future. Well, uh, what's your uh, very first next step after this interview? My first very next step is actually I'm sitting down with some people, to uh, experts to speak about waste management and starting a recycling process in our country. And in that respect, when can we see... Uh, really visible uh, uh, rise of the number of uh, selection, uh, waste selection bins uh, across the capital and across the country. Um, you actually answered that, but for, maybe... I'm not looking for an excuse here, but unfortunately due to the rebalance, yeah. we're not able to start the procurement of the containers, but as soon as the rebalance pa passes, we're going to start the process of procuring these containers. I'm hoping. Again, I'm an optimist. I'm hoping that at least by the end of the year, we'll be distributing these containers across the country. Good luck to you and to us, of course. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Civil Media. Slobodno. Nezavisno. Otvoreno.